Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One of the very helpful things that George Dickey does in his piece, What is Art and Institutional Analysis, is to distinguish between three different senses, and we might also say three different concepts and associated procedures for identifying or characterizing or defining what a work of art is. And he tells us that there's at least three distinct senses of work of art. So he's not saying that this necessarily precludes additional senses, but we do want to recognize that there are at least three and these are distinct from each other so that we don't confuse them. Making distinctions is an extremely helpful thing to do whenever we get into a controversial or ambiguous topic. And what counts as a work of art definitely fits into that, that classification. So what are the three different senses? He summarizes them as a primary or classificatory sense. And that's mostly what he's focused on in this essay on clarifying that and distinguishing the theory by which he, he makes sense out of this and provides a working definition, how that differs from earlier uh, attempts to define art in terms of, say, mimesis or imitation or representation on the one hand and expression of emotion or experience or whatever else it's going to be. On the other hand, he's going to appeal to what he calls an institutional conception of art. The secondary or derivative sense is another way of understanding the what people mean when they talk about something being a work of art. And there's, you might say there's, there's a looser way of calling something art that would fit into the umbrella of the secondary or derivative sense. And then finally, we have what he calls the evaluative sense. And it, 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 this is something worth dwelling on. There's a lot of times, not just in art, but in terms of all sorts of other things. I, I've seen it recently in terms of talking about who counts as a philosopher. There's a lot of cases where people mix up the primary sense of a term with an evaluative sense of the term. So when they say so-and-so isn't a philosopher, and you say, well, I don't understand why you say that. I mean, they're writing things that are acknowledged as, as philosophy. They're using the language of philosophers. They're carrying out analysis that looks similar to what other people call philosophy. Why are you saying they're not a philosopher? And they say, well, because they endorse conclusions I don't like, or they begin from starting points that I don't like. And then you can say, you don't mean that they're not a philosopher. You mean they're not a good philosopher. They're not what you want to call a philosopher because you're using philosopher in an evaluative sense rather than in a classificatory sense. So this is very important when we come to works of art. Uh, just you know, to take a, a, an example that's very closely connected, think about music. When somebody says, that's not music, what they mean there is not that somebody isn't actually making music. Um, they're, they're making something that the person wants to say doesn't count as good music, right? So there's, we can talk about the classificatory sense and then we can talk about the evaluative sense. Let's look first at, at what he 
characterizes as the evaluative sense. He doesn't say an awful lot about it here, but it is definitely worth um, uh, looking at for just a moment. He says that the evaluative sense is used when the object it is predicated of is deemed to be of substantial actual value. So this is when somebody, at least, is saying, this is good, or this is beautiful, or this is, we might use in other aesthetic terms like, this is cool, or, you know, the old-fashioned, you know, used to be new-fashioned, but now old-fashioned use of bad to mean good, right? Any of these sorts of things. Something is of positive and substantive value. That's the evaluative sense of calling it a work of art. Now, notice what he says about that. That could be um, a natural object. We could say that the Grand Canyon is a work of art, depending on how we, we feel about it. But what's needed in order for that to take place is some sort of reference or a ratification by what, what Dickey is calling the art world if the evaluative sense is going to stick, so to speak, right? Anybody can say something is good in some sense, but whether others accept that, that evaluation, that's something different. Let's talk now about the derivative sense. He brings this up in terms of what he calls driftwood cases, right? Where somebody takes a piece of driftwood and says, oh, wow, this is really beautiful. This is a work of art. And then somebody else comes along and says, no, it isn't. You just pulled that out of the ocean. Um, that's just randomly, you know, ground up and eroded wood that you happen to like. And they say, well, I mean, it looks like that thing in the museum over there that other people are willing to call art. So that is a good example of something that is secondary or derivative. And what Dickey has to say about that is that in these sorts of examples, um, he says, it seems natural to say of the piece of driftwood that it's a work of art. Why? Because it has many properties in common with this Branchusi piece. And then um, he's taking this from, from uh, another theorist who says, um, we could reflect on our characterization of the driftwood and the direction that is taken. Why, why do we view this as art? So here's what Dickey says. We say the driftwood is art. Why? Because of its resemblance to some paradigm work of art, or because the driftwood shares properties with several paradigm works of art. The paradigm work or works are, of course, always artifacts. The direction of our move is from the paradigmatic, uh, that is, artifactual works of art to non artifactual art. So, we might say that a spider web is in fact a work of art because it resembles or has some things in common with other things that we identify as human art. And we might do this with, you know, birdsong and music or all sorts of other things as well. But this is calling something a work of art, again, in a derivative sense. It's not quite the same thing. What about the primary or classificatory sense? So he talks about ways in which people have tried to make sense of this in the past by pointing to some characteristic like involving imitation or representation or involving expression of emotion. And he says, those were actually mistakes. What we want to do is um, think instead about the institutional nature of art. And he takes Danto's conception of art world, which then he, he provides a great analysis of here, which we don't need to go into. Suffice it to say, the art world is a set of uh, people, institutions, machinery, all sorts of things coming together that help to perpetuate works of art and to identify them as such. So he says, having described the art world, I can provide a definition of the work of art. So this is a classificatory definition. What is it? He says, a work of art in the classificatory sense is, 
an artifact, a set of the aspects of which has had conferred on it the status of candidate for appreciation by some person or persons acting on behalf of a certain social institution, the art world. So that is a different sense, a primary sense of what would be a work of art. This may not be all that satisfying to people who want something that's a bit more readily identifiable that doesn't re re require any sort of reference to, you might say, a sociological phenomenon or historical phenomenon of the art world. But this is what he is preferring to us as the best definition of art. And that is a classificatory sense of work of art. A work of art is something that is identified as a candidate for appreciation on behalf of people within a certain social institution that is the art world. And secondary or derivative senses come from that primary sense by reference to certain objects or paradigms. And then the evaluative sense would be saying, well, this is good or this is, this is bad. Uh, but that would be something distinct from the primary or classificatory sense.